morning, everyone. So today it was my colleague, the project manager, that should be here, but uh, he wasn't able to, to join us. So that's my picture in the presentation. And I hear uh, to explain uh, our problems in our campus. So I'm Betsabe Licona, a business process owner of uh, Arkema, a corporate business owner. We have uh, other two business owners in uh, Asia and in Americas, but I'm the central one. I'm here today with uh, Kartik, who is from Inspirage. He will be uh, explaining with me uh, our challenges uh, on this project. So, Arkema. Arkema is a French company that used to be a subsidiary of Total. Uh, we are based in Paris and it is producing uh, advanced materials and uh, specialty chemicals. It's a big company. Um, in uh, 2004, uh, Total um, reorganized the business of uh, chemicals and Arkema was created. In 2019, Arkema launched a study to replace the TMS. Our objectives were cover all our business units and subsidiaries, including one that was recently a boat that is called Bustic. They cover all transportation modes, air, rail, the maritime uh, and road. I need to explain that our current TMS, the one we are replacing now, uh, was only covering road, multimodal, and maritime. It was not able to cover the rail uh, shipments or the air shipments. It uh, is constraint for us. We are uh, managing all that only in SAP. So quite complicated because uh, a lot of manual um, uh, steps. And uh, the last objective, but not the less important, it, it was to take a best-in-class solution, something that is scalable, that will uh, um, answer to our uh, needs of connectivity and evolution, covering all our business cases. Today, we will present some constraints. You will see it's a little bit technical, difficult, and the current TMS it's not able to evolve to answer to those, to, to those uh, needs. And of course, as in the same way the two presentations we saw yesterday, we want to have a better managing of our cost, <laughs> uh, improve our processes, uh, be able to use IoT, to have an accurate track and trace, and uh, all the needs of connectivity that we have today with all the technologies uh, you know very well. And of course, facilitate the digitalization in the company. I will take some minutes to explain uh, uh, our roadmap and the different challenges, technical ones, organizational ones, and change management. I will start uh, maybe saying that uh, it is a <coughs> project that started in 2021 and it's a planning of two years and a half. So really challenging, very tight planning. We have here three blocks. One to explain the global, uh, <coughs> the global template that we create, the core model. One second block for the pilot phases. And then the last one is for the rollout phases. I will be uh, explaining why that one. In the global template, in 2021, when we started the, the project, we were uh, facing COVID uh, crisis. We are still facing, but uh, we were uh, in the tier of fourth uh, lockdown in France. Uh, so all the design and workshops happen uh, on remote. With, team, with teams that are based in US, Asia, and Europe, and sometimes even the Middle East. So really challenging. Um, as a French company, other challenge was the language. Um, half of our European plans are based in France. 
So my experts on site only speak French. So imagine all that. It was the first, the first project in, in our company that was uh, do, done remotely. So explain people how to do things. You, you, I, I am sure you, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. It was really challenging. Um, so this design uh, uh, was uh, organized during the mornings and the afternoons to cover uh, all the zones. So uh, we were talking of three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, <laughs> during two months, uh, two, two months. After the design, uh, what we did the build, of course, so validating the, the blueprint, uh, etc., and the UAT. Again, the organization was uh, really difficult. For Arkema, it was uh, also in business uh, point of view, also difficult, so my experts, my business experts, wasn't uh, available. They weren't available. Uh, it was very often only uh, me or maybe the other BPO or giving all the constraints. So difficult. Um, that was for the business part, let's say, the functional part. In parallel, we were analyzing uh, all the connectivity. As, uh, as usual, we have uh, um, different interfaces, interfaces between our own uh, systems, but also interfaces to the external system of uh, pa pa partners like uh, um, carriers, freight forwarders, etc. So we need uh, we needed to analyze all that because uh, all the evolutions um, should be uh, ready before go live, <laughs> of course. Um, here you see three different blocks. Why? Arkema is using today uh, the same ERP. It is SAP. So that's great. But the problem is that we have uh, different instances. We ha I have an instance called NIS that covers Europe and Asia. Another instance with different rules, different interfaces, etc., <coughs> for Americas. A tier one used by our subsidiaries, that is uh, Bostik and I even have a fourth one <laughs> of another uh, subsidiary. So the work that we were doing in Europe was not enough to cover uh, Americas and, um, and the subsidiaries. So in the same, the same project, three or four times. <clears throat> so that's why it took uh, uh, all the all the all year to do. And we are still uh, fixing some things. So that's the part for all the uh, global templates. Uh, for the pilot phase, um, we decided to start the pilots in Europe because all the central teams are in Europe and mostly in France. So um, last, uh, last October, we uh, went live uh, two pilots. Uh, one of the pilots is a big, big plant doing a lot of rail. So challenging because for the rail it was the first time we were managing that in uh, in the TMS in a new TMS. Um, we have another plant that is doing it's a smaller one, but they are doing a lot of air freight. So again, really challenging because first time for the air uh, in uh, in a TMS in, in a TM. The problem for uh, for these pilots. The first one, and the big one, was the change management. As I say, uh, um, they are French plants, only speaking French. Our integrator, <laughs> it's a global one, is speaking English. So we tried to organize uh, in advance the training for the end users. They were trained, but at the end, uh, they said, uh, we didn't understand. <laughs> okay. Let's do again. <laughs> um, we, we needed to, to translate uh, all the supports, uh, so really challenging. The day of uh, Golai, the technical part was working well. No, thank you to <laughs> Inspirage. Uh, but the user wanted somebody next to them uh, to be helped. I don't know how to do this one. Even, even the rules that didn't change, 
uh, they, they were just uh, perturbated. Uh, and then what I need to do? I just the same thing as, as, as usual. You save and you create the next object. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> and now you need to, to, to book uh, a check. Ah, that's true. Okay. So change management. You know also very well this, uh, this problem. Um, so the challenge was also that the, the team is a small team. team. It's uh, myself with uh, two other uh, business process owners in France. They are assisting me uh, to deploy. But we had uh, the two plans, um, big ones. So most of the time, we were also helping for this uh, hypercare uh, on remote. So after one year of uh, workshops, so we were experts in uh, Microsoft Teams. So it was, uh, it was OK. <coughs> So for the pilot, it was a good, good online. I was happy. But uh, we have a lot of questions. The hypercare um, was planned to, to be for two weeks. At, at the end, we did uh, almost two months. So, <laughs> challenging. Um, in parallel, we were preparing the pilot for Americas. Americas went live uh, some days ago. Three weeks. Uh, yeah. three, okay, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Um, for uh, for uh, Americas, again, same challenge. They thought it would be easier to train people because they speak English. Uh, but uh, this, there is only one business process owner uh, ensuring the support. Um, the other challenge is that uh, their uh, invoicing uh, process are really different from the one implemented in Europe and Asia. So. I was not able to help them because I don't know uh, the rules they implemented in the SAP. So the team that was uh, really uh, helping Americas was uh, inspiration. And now uh, we have started to prepare our uh, subsidiary uh, deployment, that is Bostik. Uh, it's in progress. It's really challenging also because the business is not the same. Uh, I will show you what Arkema is uh, shipping. Uh, big ISO tanks. Uh, sometimes we have uh, IBC, but the a smaller thing that we are shipping is a uh, um, metallic sphere, uh, like in this size, more or less. And for Bostik, they are doing uh, small boxes, uh, a lot of pallets. So the constraints uh, regarding sh um, shipping volumes and uh, and um, the track and trace is really different. So it's like a create, again, another uh, core model, who, um, or it make evolve our core model to cover the subsidiary's uh, uh, needs. What is in progress? Cross fingers, it will be a, a success. And let's talk about um, the rollout phase. We are paralyzing a lot of things, as you can see. <coughs> um, during the MS pilot, we were already uh, um, go, going live with uh, the first wave of deployment in Europe. We uh, went live uh, at the end of uh, January of this year. Uh, and we just finished, and the Asia wave was, uh, was started. They will uh, be live in, uh, in two, three weeks. <coughs> also, cross fingers. <laughs> and just after, they will be uh, doing the second wave uh, and so on. So we expect uh, to cover all the perimeter uh, of NIS uh, by the end, by the beginning of uh, 2022. We are talking about uh, uh, worldwide uh, 120 uh, plants and more or less uh, 1,000 uh, end users. Uh, PRD. Uh, here, uh, they are uh, really strong because just after the pilot, they will deploy all the plants in uh, in Americas in one time. And for Bostik, uh, we will dedicate uh, um, one year, uh, one year and a half to deploy all the plants because for them, we have about uh, 80, uh, 80 plants to deploy. So. Do you want to add something uh, regarding the constraints in the, in the planning? Yeah, I think um, 
Sir, some of the biggest challenges that we faced, uh, you know, that Sir has already mentioned in terms of change management. Um, the, the other challenge from a technical design perspective was the multiple instances of SAP that existed. And uh, the entire project schedule was also dependent on another project in Arkima called the Edge 2020 where they were trying to harmonize the SAP processes across all instances of SAP. So the idea was that if all uh, SAP instances had the same processes, the same objects getting created, delivery, shipment, shipment cost document, then we could build the interface once and deploy it multiple times and uh, you know the effort can be reduced a lot. Um, but you know, there have been delays in that project as well, which has a direct impact on, you know, the Bostic rollouts. Um, Bostic, uh, you know, the product profile is very different. Um, Arkima, uh, you know, ships more of bulk chemicals. Bostic is more packaged uh, goods. And so the SAP processes are very different. So it was one of the prerequisites that we will be able to harmonize the processes between the subsidiaries and the uh, core company, that hasn't happened yet, and we see the impact of that as well, right? So, uh, the reason we highlight this is because in a large program like this, uh, which covers a global footprint, uh, different businesses, different product profiles, um, COVID or not, these are the kind of challenges that we come across. These are the challenges, risks that we need to mitigate and be ready to, you know, basically walk around these challenges and make the implementation work. Um, so far, we are on time. Uh, so this 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 particular project plan is from the kickoff deck and we haven't had to change it uh, much as yet. And whatever was planned to be live uh, up until today uh, is live. And uh, it's, it's a very wide solution footprint as well. So we can move over to the next slides. I will well, maybe yeah, add yes. two words about uh, our current TMS. Uh, I don't like to talk about it because we are replacing it. <laughs> but it's important for, uh, for the next uh, explanations. Our current TMS uh, was implemented in 2012. Uh, and why we are replacing it then? It is because the software editor will stop the, um, this product by, the, by uh, 2020. So we are constrained to replace. We cannot push the planning. We can no. <laughs> if we need to go and to replace. Uh, this um, TMS we are replacing, it's a simple one. As I say, it is not covering air, it's not covering rail. Uh, the master data is really basic one. Uh, you will see, uh, you know, OTM. In OTM, you can, uh, we can manage uh, equipment. We are managing uh, the vendors, the customers, on the products, etc., etc. In our current TMS, our old TMS, uh, it is not a thing. It's uh, just to, to really book, to accept. So I'm sending uh, my request. I'm accepting. No, no date um, checking. Uh, no capability checking, not availability checking, nothing. <laughs> Anything is checked. It's only uh, to look. So one of the challenges was aligned with the uh, with the um, construction of OTM uh, to be able to um, maintain all those uh, data that we are not managing today. We were not managing. <laughs> okay. So I will uh, continue. Uh, I will uh, let uh, Kartik uh, say two words regarding the, uh, the cartography of uh, our solution and uh, the connectivity. Yeah, so what we, what we see here is what has been implemented today. Um, and you know, a lot of more systems and solutions, uh, a lot, of, lot many more systems and solutions uh, will will get added onto this, right? So now we have two instances of SAP that is connected to OTM. The interface is more or less standard between SAP and OTM. So we have the master data, um, sales orders, sales order lines, stock transfer orders, deliveries getting integrated into OTM, shipments going back to uh, SAP. <coughs> uh, 
Um, and then we have the approval and the voucher interface. Um, so more or less standard set of interfaces between SAP and OTM here. Um, what we also had to deploy was the connectivity with the various partners. Um, on, uh, as far as the road carriers are concerned, we are integrating using connectivity services of DX2. While designing the interfaces for carrier connectivity, um, we had to keep one thing in mind that there is going to be, um, you know, the current TMS will exist along with OTM until all the plans globally have been onboarded on OTM. Which means that the connectivity that we establish with the carriers cannot be disrupted, right? So if we have the EDI interfaces working with the current DMS, we have to use the same existing interfaces with no changes required on the side of the carrier to be able to connect to OTM. Right? Even a single field that changes uh, from an OTM perspective would have a large impact on the entire carrier base because they still have to send EDI messages to the old DMS or the current DMS as well, right? So, um, it would be fair to say that we didn't really have to design it. It was already designed for us and we had to, you know, adopt it. But that meant that a lot of, uh, you know, spade work had to be done in OTM. We had to make sure that Although we have more standardized processes in OTM, um, you know, we had to make sure that the data that is generated in OTM is also conforming to um, what was being sent from the current TMS and what will be received into uh, OTM. Okay? Uh, one of the biggest impact was the tender response uh, interface here because OTM requires a transaction number to be sent and to receive back if you are using the standard tender response uh, message. And to add that one field onto the, uh, you know, uh, uh, IFC sum or the EDI 204 would have had a larger impact because we would have to test with um, all the carriers to make sure that they are receiving that one field. And so we had to work around that. Instead of using a tender response, we had to use the shipment status. Uh, which doesn't require the transaction number, right? So we had to model it in such a way that whatever we deploy for OTM uh, will continue to work for the old TMS as well. Um, now, as far as rail is concerned for AMS, we are integrating with QTS. Um, so we are sending the tender uh, request out via TX2 to QTS, um, right? and TX2 converts the message into EDI 404. So that's our partner on the AMS side for uh, rail. On the Europe side, we are integrating with every sense for CLM messages. Um, so that tells us where our rail cars are at any point in time. So we have shipments. Shipment information goes from OTM to SAP to every sense, and then once the rail cars start moving, um, we start getting visibility information as to where the rail cars are um, for, through through every sense. Um, we already had an integration with SNCF from SAP, so we decided to leverage that um, instead of building a new interface from Oracle to SNCF. Uh, there was an interface, an existing interface between SAP and SNCF. Um, so what we did was we were sent, we, we planned the shipments in OTM, we sent all of the information including the route details to SAP and from SAP, um, you know, the the ELVs go out to SNCF, that information come back from SNCF into OTM. Okay. Um, so on this side, you will see the carrier connectivity as far as road, rail, uh, barge, ferry movement is concerned. That's you know primarily being handled by TX2. Um, when it comes to exports, we are integrating directly with our forwarders, GeoDIS and BDP. So it's a direct interface. There is no middleware. Uh, we send OTM maximums out to our forwarders. They consume that information um, into their system and send us back a response in OTM acceptable format as well. Okay. Um, so all of this information, sending the booking, getting the booking confirmation back, uh, container tracking information, as well as invoices uh, coming to OTM uh, via this uh, direct point-to-point -point integration between OTM and the forwards. 
We also deployed integration with DHL's web service. Um, so it goes via HIP, but instead of going for a parcel solution in between OTM and the parcel carriers, um, we developed the interfaces to directly call DHL web services. So um, we also deployed the rating request. So on, at the time of shipment planning in OTM, OTM makes a rating request call to DHL. So it's not post planning, it's the bulk plan process that makes the web service call to DHL, um, gets the service time, the cost information back into OTM. And once the shipment is created, you know, we send the requests for a booking and then the label. Um, we get the booking confirmation and the label as a base 64 message, a PDF. Um, in other terms, into into OTM. So those messages, I mean, those labels are attached to the shipment in OTM, and then the users can open and print it on uh, uh, you know a local printer of their choice, like a zebra printer of their choice. Um, now the web service that DHL has doesn't have a push method, right? So typically we expect that. Um, once our carriers have picked up the shipment, they'll keep sending us the status messages until the shipment is delivered. The DHL web service doesn't work on a push model. So just because you have sent a booking to them, it doesn't mean they'll start sending you shipment status updates. Okay, so we have to pull in the information from DHL. And so that's also like a scheduled job, um, you know, that, that we have deployed which at regular intervals sends out the uh, BOL number to get the latest status of a particular ship. Um, so this is what is currently deployed from January last year to date. And you know more will get added as we move on to Asia Pacific. Uh, there are local requirements, local systems that will still, that are yet to be integrated. Okay, so that's, that's our solution footprint at the moment. Um, so as the next topic, you know, we have just taken three use cases, unique use cases, may not be unique just to Arkima, but for Arkima, these were the most challenging uh, use cases. So we'll discuss these challenges and the solution that we deployed in OTM for this year. So we'll start with the export. <coughs> Uh, in Arkema, when we say export, we are talking about uh, maritime. Okay, I know we can export in by air, but uh, for Arkema, it's only maritime. Okay. Um, Arkema has uh, some specificities regarding the maritime. The first one is that the logistics department is uh, negotiating directly with shipping lines the rates. So we keep uh, directly to, um, to feed our OTM. Our current TMS also, and um, for the booking, to requesting the check of capacity and book in the vessel, we are using the services of the freight forwarders, the ones that uh, Kartik uh, uh, explained. For the booking, we need to prevent in advance. We need to send our request to the freight forwarders. Uh, between uh, three to eight weeks before uh, the vessel departure to be sure to have the, the space in the vessel. Once the booking is confirmed, the next step in Arkema is to create a delivery object in SAP. This delivery cannot be created if the booking, if the booking is not uh, validated. So we wait until it is validated to create delivery. And um, why I'm talking about this is because the delivery is a prerequisite to plan the post, the pre and post legs. So I cannot start to find a truck to come to the plant uh, search for my container if my booking is not validated. The responsibility of uh, the creation of the delivery is on, on the shipment planner. Our shipment planners are based in the plants. They are creating deliveries three days or four days before the departure of the products from the plant. But I explain first, I need to book three to eight weeks before. Then we ask the customer service 
the safe assistant, to do this booking. It's also logical for us because it's a sales assistant who is validating the date of delivery with our customer. So, Carti will explain the solution uh, uh, for this part. Um, and in each uh, sales order that we are creating in SAP, we can have one or several containers. So, for one sales order, uh, I need to book a space uh, for one or 10, 12, 20 containers. So for the solution, let uh, the <laughs> Okay, so the first step in the process uh, was to be able to create the booking request, right? As Pratsavi mentioned that it had to be anywhere between three to eight weeks before shipping. Uh, the only option <laughs> available was to use the sales order because the delivery doesn't exist in SAP anymore. So we integrated the sales order into ODM as an order release. Uh, we plan it into a shipment and we send the booking request out to the forwarders. Right? So the vendor on this particular shipment is the forwarder. Um, now, as part of this booking request, we also have to tell the forwarder uh, who is our preferred carrier, right? So rank one steamship line for this lane, we have to take, we have to communicate that to the forwarder and we also have to tell them who are the other steamship lines that are contracted for? What are the various ranks, right? So rank one is Musk, rank two is Hapag, rank three is Koeni, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, we have to we have to communicate that to our forwarders. And the forwarders have our contracts and they can book space with any of these carriers. So while we tell them that our preferred steamship line for this lane is Musk, uh, you know, the forwarders cannot assure that a space will be available or containers will be available with Musk. And so they have the option to book with the other steamship lines that are contracted on that particular lane. Now, which also means that, um, you know, if they change the steamship line, there could be a change in the port of lading, in the port of discharge. So we really don't know how our shipments, or how or which ports our containers are going to go through until we receive the booking confirmation back. Right? So the forwarders, they communicate with the steamship lines. Once they have the booking confirmation from the steamship line, they send the booking confirmation back to OTM. And when we receive the booking confirmation, that's when we know when the containers uh, will be available at the plant for stuffing, when will they be ready to be picked up at the plant, uh, which port of lading will they go through, which port of discharge will they go through. Uh, what's the sale date, what's the sale cutoff date, what's the estimated time of arrival at the port of discharge, and what's the estimated time of arrival at the eventual consignee, right? Um, now, so we have to wait for all of this information to be available because if we don't know what's the sale cutoff date, we can't plan the free leg moment, right? We can't arrange for the drainage services until we know by when the container has to be uh, delivered at the terminal. Okay, so all of this information comes in on the booking confirmation from the forum. <coughs> and after that, we use the OTM workflow automation agents to create a console, and the console has all of the information from the booking confirmation and the console shipments. Okay? Now, one of the key things here is that. On the sales order in SAP, the sales assistants clearly mention what type of container is required and how many of them. Right? So they say that we need two 20D containers or we need one 40D container um, and that information flows into OTM. But when it comes to booking with the steamship line, uh, we are not assured that we will get the same containers, right? especially in today's time um, where there is a shortage of container. We might order for two 20D containers, but you know, Musk will come back saying, I don't have two 20D, I have one 40D. So can you work with one 40D, right? So we may request for a set of containers, type count, uh, but the confirmation that comes back can be totally different. And that is very important for us because we have rules in SAP which says that we have to create as many deliveries as the number of containers. So if the steamship line confirms that there are two 20D containers, then we have to create two deliveries, one for each container. If the steamship line confirms that there will be one 40D container, then we have to create one delivery for that one 40D. And why do we do that? Uh, because 
at these chemical factories, the pickup appointment is very important. Right? So if there is going to, I mean, if each container is going to be picked up on its own truck, um, typically, you know, we need an appointment for every truck that comes into this plant. And so we need to be able to plan the pre-leg shipment for each container. So if there are five containers shipping on the sales order, we need to have five pre-leg shipments so that we can set up unique appointments, right? So not all containers will be picked up on the same trailer. Not all containers will be picked up at the same time. You could have one trailer that comes in, picks the container, goes to the port, comes back, picks the second container, goes to the port, comes back. And we need to have appointments for all of that. So, you know, uh, the pre-leg, uh, you know, we have to create as many pre-leg shipments as the number of containers. Okay. Um, so, after having created the console and the console shipment, we send the booking confirmation to SAP. So, the sales order is now in a status which tells the plant that we have the booking confirmation. Now, you are ready to create deliveries. Okay. Uh, subsequently, the shipment planners at the plant, they create the delivery and the delivery is sent to OTM. Like I mentioned earlier, we have as many deliveries as the number of containers. Once the delivery come into OTM, that's when we can plan our pre-leg and post-leg. Right? We, we have booked the main leg shipment. We know what's the uh, vessel departure, vessel arrival dates, what's the sale cutoff date. So now we can plan the pre and the post-leg and we take advantage <coughs> of order movements in this case. So we break the order releases into order movements. So three legs for the shipment, so we have three order movements. We update the order movement, operational pickup and delivery dates based on all the dates that we have received on the booking confirmation, the sale cutoff date, sale date, arrival date. And then we plan the pre-leg and then we plan the post -leg, Right. So we have the booking confirmation for the main leg first, then we are able to plan the pre-leg and the post -leg. Um, a lot of this, a lot of this is driven by automation agents. Uh, we don't really have standard out of box functionality in ODM. We are leveraging standard out of box objects like the console and the console shipments to 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 deploy this solution. Uh, but a lot of the manipulation of data happens using automation agents. Okay. Um, now, if we are booking through forwarders, why do we? Uh, why do we have to break the shipments into pre-leg, main leg and post leg? We are going to be invoiced by the forwarder. Right? So why do we want to manage the three legs? One of the reasons like I mentioned earlier was the pickup appointment. The other reason is the type <coughs> of contract that we have with the forwarders. Um, in some regions, the forwarders are responsible for booking a uh, door to peer movement, which means from the plant till the port of discharge, the forwarder handles the movement. But if we have to deliver to the customer, that service is not covered by the forwarder and we need to get the services of a triage carrier um, you know, on, on the other side. Uh, in China, due to local tax requirements, the pre-leg shipment and the main leg shipment have to be different carriers. Uh, they can't, I mean, so Geodis may have a subsidiary in Hong Kong uh, or a subsidiary in China that's providing the pre-leg services, but they are not the same as the geodis that is providing the booking on the main leg shipment. So we have to create these pre-leg and post-leg shipments with a different vendor so that we are able to tell them that you have containers to pick up at our plant. Okay. Uh, so while the main leg shipment is automatically tendered and accepted, the pre-leg and the post-leg, you know, we still need to tender them across. And when all the bookings are confirmed, then we send the shipment back to SAP. So there's a bit of redundancy here uh, because we first get the sales order, we plan them, we use that for booking with the forwarder. Then we get the deliveries and we plan them again, right? So yeah, effectively what we have done is that we have a booking shipment and then we have the execution shipments. So we have a shipment just to manage bookings and then we have a set of shipments to manage the execution of the shipment itself. Um, so, the biggest benefit of this solution is that by delaying the delivery creation in SAP, the sales assistants have an added flexibility to modify the sales order scripts because, um, you know, the sales assistant can be based in China, 
but the products may be shipping from France. Okay. If the sales assistant has to modify the sales order and if a delivery already exists, then they have to wait for the shipment planner to report at work in France to delete the delivery. Sales assistants cannot delete the delivery. Right? So we have to make sure that uh, you know the delivery gets created as late as possible so that the sales assistant have the flexibility to change the sales order if they want to. Um, and because each delivery represents a container, we are able to create as many pre like shipments and manage the pickup appointment. Uh, the booking fees with the forwarder is typically for the entire booking, right? So, uh, but the freight with the steamship line is a per container cost. So, with this model where we have the execution shipment and the booking shipment, we are able to calculate <coughs> the booking fees on the booking shipment and the freight on um, you know the shipments that get created from the delivery. So, we are able to uh, you know properly calculate what our approval will be. And uh, you know, forwarders are able to send a consolidated invoice um, for each container. Yeah? So they break up the costs by each container and they send a consolidated invoice into ODM. So we have invoices matching to every shipment, uh, they match to an approval, and we are able to do a proper freight audit. That way. So that was probably the most challenging use case that we had um, and you know to use standard functionality in ODM, uh, ODM cloud right so we don't have access to database stored procedures triggers uh, so we used standard ODM functionality to work around things and you know meet those challenges. Um, Doc scheduling typically is a very small part of a typical ODM project. Uh, but when it comes to a chemical industry, it's a completely different ball game altogether. So I'll let uh, let Sabi explain this. Yeah. Well, we say that SPOR was the most difficult, but I don't know if the scheduling is <laughs> it's easy. Um, so uh, what you are seeing in, uh, in the screen, it's a representation of uh, one of our plants uh, where we have a uh, different um, loading bays. Uh, you see the trucks. And what you see in gray with the um, the bay with the arms uh, to um, to load the bulk products. Uh, what happened? <laughs> One arm uh, is able to load in two different uh, ways: in, in the left, on the right. It is uh, giving uh, one single product, let's say an acid, uh, baking soda, something like that. And you could imagine it's only one product, but not only one product, because we are also the dilution of this product. So we have different concentrations. In SAP, it will be represented by different um, product codes. So one arm is able to load in two different bays different products. But if you are loading on the right the product one, all the dilutions cannot be uh, loaded in the other bay during the time of this uh, of this loading, and we have a, that's one example of constraint. But uh, we can also have um, dangerous uh, goods constraints. We have some products that cannot be uh, loaded at the same time because well, it's, we are talking about chemicals, so it's dangerous. Um, Extra. So we explain, uh, we try to modelize uh, all those constraints uh, to encourage to be able uh, to put in place uh, um, appointment uh, system that will uh, answer to all those constraints. And we have, I don't know, 10 or 12 constraints like this. <laughs> um, another challenge in doctor scheduling um, will be that uh, the trucks that are coming to the plants could be one uh, isotime, um, one single product inside, but we have also multi compartments uh, trucks. If we have five compartments in this truck, I can uh, load five different products coming from five different sales orders or deliveries. And the challenge is that for this one single truck, I need to schedule five appointments, five different appointments. 
On the other side, a more classical uh, case will be the MTN case. We have different um, shipments in one single truck, and, and I only need one appointment. And our carriers could also communicate to us um, the loading sequence they need for this truck, because they are <coughs> optimizing, of course, uh, doing a mid run, etc. So, that are three uh, examples of constraints that we communicate to, to Inspirage regarding the dog schedule. Okay, and um, there are still gaps in the solution. Um, but to be very honest, we haven't been able to satisfy all the constraints. <coughs> Uh, but we have been able to uh, deploy a solution which covers most constraints. Uh, when it comes to you know the loading arms, especially the loading arms that can turn around and load, we have to make sure that when the loading arm is in use at one bay, it cannot be used in the other bay. Um, and then that's that's something that we have worked on by defining a custom resource type of loading arm. Right? So usually. Uh, you know, we see the dog door is a resource type that's available in ODM standard out of box, uh, but we also defined a resource type of loading arm. Uh, every dog door and every loading arm has product related uh, constraints. So we have defined a flex commodity which says that on this loading bay, on this dog door, we can only load these commodities, and a similar constraint exists on the loading arm as well that on this loading arm, we can only load these commodities. So how does it work, right? So if I define if I define AE as a loading arm uh, with the product constraint of AE being, you know, the only AE product can be loaded, I define one loading arm and I have two dog doors available for loading AE. Okay. The moment OTM uses that one loading arm, um, you know, you can't set up a, another appointment at the same time. Okay, so we have to we have to look at you know so we we define one loading arm but two dog doors okay for the same product but once that one loading arm is used uh, you can't use the other dog door at the same time okay. so that's how we managed a lot of uh, these product related constraints um, as far as the loading arms are concerned especially the loading arms that get turned around and load in different doctors. Um, Multi-compartment was a different challenge again because um, in OTM you have one pickup stop and OTM allows you to define one appointment at a pickup stop. Um, you can't you know, <coughs> set up multiple appointments uh, but we needed, we needed uh, separate appointments, right? So for example, if I have a multi-compartment uh, shipment in which I have to load AE2H, uh, AM, uh, and then ABU, right? Three different products. Uh, that truck can't just book a slot here and all, I mean, we can't load all chemicals at the same doctor. Yeah? So the truck will have to come into one uh, loading bay for AE2H to be loaded. Then the truck will have to move around and come here so that uh, AM can be loaded and then they'll have to move around here for ABU to be loaded. So we really need as many appointments as the number of products are being loaded, but we have one pickup stop and we have one pickup date. So to work around this, again, uh, we took advantage of OTM workflow. So when we have a multi-compartment shipment that gets planned in OTM, we use the OTM workflow to create as many sh appointment shipments as the number of compartments. Okay, so if we have five compartments, we create five more shipments in ODM. And the carriers have visibility to those shipments. They set up appointments for each of those shipments. Um, and, and that's how they are able to work. Right? All of these additional shipments refer to the original shipment ID. So when we send the booking request out to the carriers, they know that my shipment is one, two, three, four. Um, and so when they go into the doc scheduling screen, they see 1, 2, 3, 4, underscore 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, underscore 2, so on and so forth for each compartment. And then they are able to set up the appointments uh, as required. Um, LTN was a more easier solution. Um, we had to rely on shipment groups. So 
the ATL carriers have agreed to log into OTM. They look at all the shipments that they would be picking up on a particular day, and we have given them a uh, you know an easy button to create shipment groups with all those shipments. They enter the truck plate number, and we group them together. <coughs> Uh, at the time that they enter the truck plate number, they can also specify the loading sequence for each shipment. So they can say that we're going, you will have to make sure that the shipments are staged correctly at the plant, so that when the trucks arrive, we are able to load the shipments properly. So they provide the loading sequence as well, which is available to the dispatch team at the plant. Um, and then the carriers, they set up appointment on a shipment group, um, right, instead of setting up appointments on a shipment. Uh, the problem that this created was that the uh, the old new workbench for dock scheduling, now that we have the enhanced uh, workbench coming up in the new versions, uh, that didn't support shipment groups. Um, so we had to go back to using the old dock scheduling screens um, so as to be able to work with uh, shipment groups there. So that's as far as uh, dock scaling is concerned. And the last topic is around <coughs> asset uh, tracking. This is probably our smallest topic for the day. Um, so yeah, we'll be quick. So uh, those are the kind of uh, equipments, um, packaging, we call that packaging. We are using uh, within Akema <coughs> to transport our bulk, bulk products. We can have uh, big isotanks or red cars as we can have a uh, IBC or a smaller, uh, a smaller ones like the spheres, the metallic spheres. And we have uh, in the next, uh, some of them. We have also refers, etc. Some of them are reusable, most of them, 99%. And we are tracking them. We need to know where our returnable packaging are, having the, the last position. Is it still uh, in the facilities of our customer, or is it already uh, back to our uh, um, um, plants? That's one uh, constraint. Uh, some of those uh, packaging are big, and then they are declaring SAP as equipments. We are managing the maintenance, uh, etc. So um, for them, we will also need uh, to track where are they. In, uh, I hope, uh, real, uh, real time. Um, <coughs> the difficulty will be more for the small, smaller ones, the SVC, because the SVC, uh, you can see we can put uh, several in the same truck. And sometimes they are not going uh, to the same uh, customer uh, and are not returning in the, at the same time. So that's uh, small challenges uh, regarding uh, the traceability our of our equipments and our material packaging. Okay. So uh, the important differentiation is between an equipment and a handling unit, right? So when we are shipping an equipment like a rail car or a reefer container, we can easily get back tracking information from our carriers and forwarders, right? So tracking a container is easy. Tracking a pallet inside a container is that much more difficult, right? So that's, that's basically the challenge that we had. Um, when it comes to receiving tracking information for rail cars and reefers, our partners are able to send the tracking information uh, very well. Okay? Um, but if we have to track uh, the IBCs and the ISO tanks, then our partners are not equipped to provide visibility information at that level. But we still need to know each equipment, where are they, right? So, what we do is that in OTM, um, we receive the PGI number as part of the ship unit information. So an ISO tank, ISO tank becomes a ship unit in OTM, and there is an attribute on the ship unit which stores the ISO tank number. Okay. So on a shipment, we know what are the different tanks that are available. And then when we receive shipment status messages, we use that attribute to update the status onto the equipment. So every ISO tank, every SBC, every IBC uh, that are on a long term lease with Arkema, they are defined as an equipment in ODM. And then, uh, you know, whenever we receive a shipment status update, we update the equipment saying this is where the equipment is. So those that are not interested in the shipment, 
uh, at the plant if they just want to see where this particular iso tank is they can look up the equipment in odm so you know this is an you know example here so there is a ton tank here they can just search for this particular equipment and look for tracking events so you will see in odm it shows what was the last last sighting location which is a customer location so this ton tank is at the customer site this is the customer name when was it last seen uh, at this customer site okay and if we look at all the events then the entire history of where this tank has been is recorded in odm so you can see that the shipment was first <coughs> um, you know on 12th of november it went through several terminals and it eventually arrived at the delivery location um, on the 15th of november and then it was picked up again on the first of uh, sorry on the 20th of january so there is a complete history of every equipment um, you know when was it picked up where did it go through who was the eventual customer when did it come back to the plant is it still in transit right so these these messages here the p ones and the expos will tell us that okay these iso times are still in transit and that's how we are able to track all of our reusable assets and that was our paper here um, so thank you very much i know we have already overshot the time that was allocated to this paper um, but if we have the time for any questions sure it's friday right yeah <laughs>